video, I'm going to tell you how healing your thyroid is a lot like solving a puzzle. By the end of this video, you're going to know all of the pieces that you need to work on in order to really help your thyroid to heal. What is up? I'm Melody Reynolds, founder of MelodyReynolds.com, and this is my channel. If this is your first time here and you're interested in learning how to get symptom relief from hypothyroidism through simple diet and lifestyle changes, then go ahead and start right now by subscribing to my channel and ringing the notification bell so that you never miss another Thyroid Thursday upload. You guys have been asking me, you've been seeing my post about how I've lost 30 of the 65 pounds I put on from hypothyroidism. Boy, let me tell you, that was fun. I've finally stopped my hair from falling out. I've gotten my sex drive back, which makes my husband a happy man. I have much more energy than I have had the past going on four years now. So I'm on the right path. I'm doing the right things. And you guys are like, well, what did you do? I want you to understand I can't answer that with one answer. Thyroid disease, I want you to think of it as a puzzle. It has many different pieces that have to be addressed. And so I'm going to tell you what those pieces are tonight. And I have found one of the biggest symptoms of hypothyroidism is brain fog. So when you tell somebody with brain fog a whole bunch of information, it overwhelms us. We can't learn it. And then you're sitting there like stressed out. I don't want to do that for you. That's not how I learned either. So I'm going to give you bite-sized pieces of information. What are the puzzle pieces to thyroid disease? You're going to have to look at several different things. You're going to have to work on all of these things at once, but it's okay because I'm going to help you. I had to figure a lot of this stuff out. It took me years, so I'm going to help you. Number one, you want to look at gut health. All disease starts in the gut. A lot of people with hypothyroidism have a couple things going on. You have got leaky gut, and you're not going to feel it leaking, but basically it just means that your gut is its not all sealed up the way that it should, and things are leaking out of your gut into your body causing inflammation. That's what causes that weight gain that we see. We're not always overweight just because we're stuffing our faces. A lot of people with hypothyroidism can eat very little and continue to put on the weight. In fact, it's bad to eat too little. It stretches your thyroid out more and causes your body to hold on to more fat. So it's actually inflammation which hides in your fat cells and blows them up and makes you look overweight. So once you get rid of that inflammation, then your body starts to drop the weight. So leaky gut is an important thing you got to know what to do to seal that back up and to really get that to work well for you again. You also probably have something called low stomach acid. A lot of you may have GERD or heartburn and you may be taking medication for that. Bad, 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 bad. Most of us don't have enough stomach acid and it causes the very same symptoms. So if you can increase your stomach acid, and I have several different ways to show you how to do that, it helps those symptoms to go away and it helps you to start absorbing your nutrients better. So when you seal up your gut and you work on that low stomach acid, then your body is primed and ready when you start eating the right things, which we're going to talk about that in a minute, for all those nutrients you're going to give it to heal it. If you've got leaky gut and you've got low stomach acid and you're not dealing with that, then you're not going to absorb the things that you're eating and then your body's not going to heal. You're going to continue to deteriorate. So you have to address gut health. And there's several different ways to do that through diet, through supplements, through dealing with your stress. I'm going to teach you all of that. Number two, you've got to deal with stress. At the root of all thyroid disease is stress. Women, ladies, now men have thyroid disease too. My husband has it. He has Hashimoto's. There are fewer men that get it than women. I think too because they don't go to the doctor and complain the way that we do and push. They kind of just accept things. I know my husband would have if I had not figured this out for him and really advocated to get him proper treatment. Men get it too, but ladies, I think that we like to press on. We, we try to be everything to everybody. We're mom, we're sister, we're wife, we're friend. Well, we, we got to do this and we got to do that. Well, nobody else can do it. Well, I have to do this. And I, you know, you can't continue to stress yourself out and not deal with that stress and make some lifestyle changes so that you're not getting as bombarded as you are and wearing yourself out because what you're doing is driving yourself right into hypothyroidism. You've got to learn healthy ways to deal with your stress. You've got to learn to set up boundaries, to start saying no to things that don't serve you or your family or that you simply cannot do. And the idea is to heal your body so then you can start doing more things, right? It's not forever, but you've got to be very mindful of where you're spending your time and your effort. Are you sleeping? Are you giving yourself at least a Sabbath a week? The good book tells you how to take care of your body. Most of us miss that, but it tells us what to eat, 
when we're supposed to rest. We have gotten all that really messed up. So you got to deal with stress. And I know I used to hear people say, well, you should de-stress. If you can't change a situation, you're going to have to learn to change your mindset around that situation. And that's hard. But you need to surround yourself with people that are doing the same thing. You need a tribe of people to support you in that. And that's what I offer. You've also got to, uh, number three, address vitamin and mineral deficiencies. For example, if you're anemic, having anemia alone can cause you to be hypothyroid. That blew my mind because I was severely severely anemic like dangerously anemic that alone can pull your thyroid down to hypothyroidism you've got to make sure things like vitamin d vitamin b your iron those kinds of things are at the levels that are optimal and make you feel good that goes back to your leaky gut and your low stomach acid even if you eat well which i ate okay i mean it was pretty good uh, so I thought, you're like, well, I'm eating vegetables and I'm eating all the things that I should, but I still don't feel any better. It's because you've got that leaky gut and that low stomach acid. Four, cortisol. That goes back to stress, but I'm going to mention it again because it's really important when you're dealing with thyroid health. So cortisol is your stress hormone. So it's that hormone that kicks in when you got to fight, flight, or freeze, right? It's awesome if you're in a dangerous situation, you got to make a decision. You got to run, you got to stop, whatever it is. That's awesome. The problem is we get stuck in fight or flight mode and we've got cortisol pumping, pumping, pumping because we're stressed out because we don't pay attention to our bodies and we push, 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 push. If your cortisol is wacky and you try to take thyroid meds, Sometimes that can mess your meds up and you'll think the meds are making you feel bad, but it's your cortisol. You've also got to deal with liver health. See, these are all the puzzle pieces. So liver health, why is that important? Because, let me give you a little thyroid lesson. Your thyroid puts out a hormone called T4. T4 then goes to your liver, a little bit in your gut, but mostly in your liver, and it gets converted to T3. T3 is the hormone that makes you feel good. It keeps your hair from falling out. It makes your skin moist. It helps you to not gain weight because you have a metabolism. It helps you to have energy. All those things that you need in order to feel like a human happen when it converts in your liver. If your liver is congested, sluggish, fatty, if your gallbladder is not working, ask me how I know. If any of that is going on, you may not even realize that's going on until it becomes a dangerous situation. So you've got to be working on your liver and gallbladder health. I'm going to include gallbladder in that because they kind of are like best friends and they work together. But really your liver. You've got to make sure that you are supporting your liver so that it can do its job. Not just with the thyroid, but with it's your filter for everything in your body. So if it's sluggish, you're going to feel it. Couple more things. You've got to remove toxic chemicals from your home and from your personal care products. Okay. So cleaners, air fresheners, laundry soap, dryer sheets, makeup. Do you know the average woman puts on 180 chemicals on her body before she has breakfast every morning? We put stuff in our hair. We're putting on our makeup and our moisturizer and you know, I don't use perfume, but some of y'all are using perfume and you're spraying it on your thyroid. Please, heavens to Betsy, stop that. Stop it. Stop it. Okay? Stop it. So, you need to be removing all of those toxic chemicals. And that includes plastic that you're eating out of or drinking out of. Cookware, you know, that's flaking off. Some of that Teflon stuff and that nonstick stuff. All of that kind of stuff is causing a burden on your body and it goes back to backing up that liver. So you need somebody to help you navigate through getting rid of those toxic chemicals. That's me because I have literally done that. I would say my house is about 95% chemical free. I do use hairspray. I've given up everything else and I have better alternatives that are so much better for your body. Also, when you're using toxic chemicals, they bind to your hormone receptors because toxic chemicals have xenoestrogens in them. And you've got these hormone receptors over here and those xenoestrogens go and glob onto that. And then your body goes, oh, oh, well, we already have estrogen. We already have this hormone. So it stops making it or it makes more of it or it just goes crazy. It doesn't know what to do. And there are options that are so much better for you that you wouldn't even, you're not going to miss the toxic stuff. You're really not and your body's going to be happier for it. I'm kind of an expert in that part of, it, of things. <laughs> Trust me. However, if you would like to jump the gun on that and start learning about ditching and switching now, 
I happen to have a wellness group on Facebook where I'm already teaching how to do that. If you would like to be added to that wellness group, there is a link below this video in the description. In fact, I'm going to be doing an entire series here on YouTube all about how to ditch toxic chemicals that are destroying your thyroid and switch to better options that are truly clean and have not been greenwashed. So to make sure that you don't miss that, again, be sure to get on my thyroid overcomers email list and subscribe to this channel so that you get notified when those videos are posted. I'm going to walk you through every inch of my home and show you what things we ditched and what we switched to in order to take that toxic burden off of our thyroids and our hormones in general. And the very last piece of the puzzle that I feel like is super, super important for you is diet. I know y'all don't like for me to talk about diet. Some I've had people get very personally offended when I talk about diet. If you truly want to heal your body, you're going to have to watch the food you put in it because that is either a poison you're consuming three times a day or the best medicine you can consume three times a day. If you are eating foods that are inflammatory, so gluten, dairy, soy, sugar, those are the four biggest offenders. Then we've got nightshades, nuts and seeds, things like that. Listen, I don't eat any of that and I still eat really good food. When you are truly committed to healing your body, and getting your health back, you're willing to do whatever it takes. I want to be here for my child as long as I possibly can, and I don't want to just survive. I want to thrive and be vibrant for my child, for my husband, for the people that count on me, for the impact I want to make on the world. How are you going to take care of your family if you're sick all the time? You have to commit to watching what you put in your mouth. And I don't care what the rest of the world is doing. The rest of the world is out eating junk food, fast food. They don't sit down and cook meals anymore. They don't pay attention to the food they're eating. I could go on and on and on about this, but I'm going to keep it short and tell you there are certain things that you can eat that will either inflame your body or heal your body. You just make the choice. Once you realize that you can heal your body with food, maybe not have to be on 16 different medications, if that's important to you, you're not gonna complain about that. Is it hard? Yeah, it can be, but you know what's harder? Being sick. I was so sick for four years, Three of those years, I couldn't even clean my house. What kind of life is that? I had no energy for anything. I couldn't take care of myself hardly. And I was trying to take care of my family and all the people that need me. And there was nothing left over for myself either. That's my big rant about food. It's important. I can show you what kinds of foods will heal your body and what kinds of foods you're eating that are keeping you inflamed. Because it's not that you're eating too much food, it's that you're eating the wrong kinds of foods. And we also have to look at food sensitivities. Are you allergic to some foods? There's a way to find that out. And you can be allergic to things like avocados, which are supposed to be healthy. You just need somebody to guide you through it. The last piece of the puzzle is medicine. Now, listen. Some people are just going to need to take thyroid hormone, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm all about doing things as natural as possible. I got rid of my Hashimoto's in the fact that my antibodies were high. Through food, I was able to bring those antibodies down, so my body is no longer attacking my thyroid. That's what happens with Hashimoto's. Your body literally attacks and destroys your thyroid. When that happens, you're going to have to go on hormones the rest of your life. You're not going to have a choice. You're going to be dependent upon those. I didn't want that to happen, so a big thing was cutting out gluten and dairy for me. And once I did that, my levels came back down to normal pretty quickly, actually. If you do have to take medication, though, you you need to be on the right kind. A lot of you guys are taking medicine, and you're not seeing any of your symptoms improve, and you're being told that your levels are fine or normal. Well, that's fine and dandy, but if you've still got symptoms, what do normal levels mean? I will link below this video a blog post I did about the difference between normal and optimal. If you want to take the time to read that, you want optimal levels, number one, but you need the right kind of medication. There are different kinds of medications, and I will be covering that in my email series and here on Thyroid Thursdays. I'm going to be covering what kinds of medications actually work. Because if you're taking the wrong kind, and I know people that have taken it, well, I've been taking that for 20 years, and I feel horrible. Okay, shouldn't you question that then? I'm not a doctor, okay? I cannot diagnose you. I can't cure anything for you. I can't tell you how to medically treat anything. I'm a thyroid patient. 
who has walked through this hell for four years, who is getting her life back. I feel like I'm pretty qualified to tell you what has worked for me and my husband and the people that I've helped. And I'm not gonna tell you to ignore the advice of your doctor. I'm gonna teach you more about your body, what you can do on your own to support it and help take the burden off of your thyroid and your liver and see where that gets you. And then I'm gonna teach you how to advocate for yourself and work with your doctor. How can you make really good choices about your health care if you don't understand what your body's supposed to be doing? If you don't understand how your body works and how to get it to work at its optimum, you can't. You're then giving that authority, you're giving all your power away to your doctor. That is not their job. A doctor won't make you healthy. A doctor can help you but it's your responsibility to figure out what are the things you need to do on your own and then what are the best options that you and your doctor can come to together. You've got to learn how to advocate for yourself and maybe you need to fire your doctor and find a better one. It's okay to do that too. They work for you. Question of the day. Did you learn something new from today's video? Tell me in the comments below what hit home for you most of all. What was the biggest aha moment you had in today's video? To get on my Thyroid Overcomers email list and get those Thyroid Thursday emails delivered to your inbox, click on the link below this video in the video description. Thanks so much for watching this video. I went ahead and linked my thyroid health playlist for you here on the screen. I also linked another video that I think you'll like. And if you see that round picture of me floating around the screen, go ahead and click on that. If you didn't already, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next Thyroid Thursday.